Welcome back, rugby viewers. It's the final round of the rugby championship, and it's all to play for. Guran Blevi, how are you doing, my friend? Doing well, thank you, Gabby. Good to be in the, the Fox Sports Studios. I uh, can't believe the rugby championship is coming to an end. Um, so much that already happened this competition, and it all comes down to the last game. Like, who is going to take it? Um, to uh, yeah, and uh, the Boca obviously looking to seal their first uh, rugby championship. Well, full rugby championship. Is it since 2009? Since 2009. Mm-hmm. And actually, I think it will only be the third time, should we be able to to bring it home, the third time since, 2000 and, um, since 2009, the third time that we can yeah win the championship. 2019, yeah. the year of the World Cup, we won it the last time. And then 2009, That's before the that. The shorts in the World Cup. The short yeah, and World right. Cup, yeah. yeah, exactly. But let's just first really take a second, Goran. Let's talk about last weekend. I mean, what's happened there? Um, and yeah. let's not just blame Mani Lebok because I think it's it's more than that. Well, we can't blame Mani Lebok only, right? Solely for, for that missed kick because let's be honest, Argentina also missed two or three kicks from the tee. Um, we shouldn't have ever been in that position the only thing, obviously, is that Mone Lebok is the kicker in the team and you expect him to make those kicks. But historically, unfortunately for him, he's not a clutch kicker. And it came down to him having to make that kick for the Springboks to win uh, a very tight affair. So it wasn't only him. I thought, uh, Gabzi, we came out to a 17 17-0 lead and then butchered that. I mean, way in your yeah. life. Will you experience something like that? Um, and then immediately in 20 minutes, Argentina scored, uh, what, four tries, which is yeah. unheard of against the Springboks. I mean, this should never happen. Under Joel yeah. Nino's defense, we would have absolutely lost our shit. Um, yeah. So I think there's a lot to unpack on last week's game. Uh, we obviously can't go through it all, but uh, but yeah, what was, your, uh, what was your opinion of that game? Yeah, to be honest, I think... Really, uh, probably quite a bold statement of me to to make this statement, but I think there's only one man to to blame for, and he should look in in the mirror, and that's probably Rossi because Rossi was the yeah. one to make all these bold calls, you know, to to mm. know that we can be in a position for Money Lebok to kick that. Look, mm. I'm a massive Rossi fan. Everything he does in my eyes is is just you know a religion. I believe it. Oh. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, at this stage, yeah. There is only one guy, you know. I mean, he also again went out backing Murat to captain a side who struggled in our lineouts. There's a couple of talking points, like you said, that we can't go through all of them. And sadly, we were in a position at the end of the game where you needed a kicker on the field. We had a guy there that, like you said, historically, who's not been, you know, up for it. He struggled in the past in these pressure kicks. And mm. there was nobody else to step up to the T and, you know, that was a you know do or die moment, and sadly we lost the game. But like you said, lots of other things leading up to that. We should have never been in this position. Our defense being one of those. Um, so yeah. I'm just hoping, really. I think you know if we would transition over to this weekend, I don't think mm. we we should be too concerned. Well, speaking very uh, optimistically, because we know the Springboks knows when to show up in the big games. You know, mm-hmm. this is almost like yeah. a not a World Cup final, but it's a rugby championship final. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think this weekend, I would really hope to see that at least, you know, we make a couple of changes Some on the fence. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if you have anything else to add on last weekend before we transition over to this weekend. No, it's just, we want improvement, right? The defense, like we touched on, we tackled at 71%. I think we missed something like 27 tackles. Our execution was extremely poor. I mean, I heard from... Uh, um, was it the Rugby Aotearoa podcast in New Zealand? They said that the box had um, uh, 36 carries in the 22 from 16 22 entries. And what that means is that after two phases, we lose the ball in the 22. I mean, on average. I mean, that's ridiculous. Like that execution wise, that is extremely poor, right? Um, and I'll take that with the poor defense. And then our lineouts has not been functioning very well. And that used to be or is traditionally the Springboks' top weapon. But yeah. with the new Tony ball and attacking strategy that we have, we're looking to use more players out wide. So we run this uh, four-man, five-man lineout, which requires a lot of movements, you know, coming forward, going back, and, you know. And then we miss our mark. Uh, Malcolm Marks, one of the best hookers in the world, struggling to find his mark. Bongi hasn't been flashed yeah. either. 
So, I mean, we look now at the, you know, the, the hookers of the team because our lineups aren't functioning, but it's, it's the whole system together. But yeah. the scrums, the scrums went very well against Argentina. And I really think that's going to be a place where we need to put the marker down against um, against the Los Pumas this weekend. And especially playing more our traditional uh, Springbok rugby, putting them under pressure with some kicks and then hoping for them to make a mistake and then target those scrum areas. Yeah. No, Gori, look, um, you summed it up perfectly. Um, I think you might as well just Thank you, join, join, join the Super <laughs> Rugby at Tora uh, if you're going to speak like that. But um, uh, no, on a, on, on a, just on a last note, I think also, you know, hats off to Argentina. I have to give them credit where credit is due. Yes, they yeah. clearly did their homework. Um, and I mean, let's not forget that game where they thrashed Australia. They were also actually down mm. in that game and then they came back. Yeah. So I do think they've done their homework well. And I'm kind of scared for for what they'll come out of this weekend. They have beaten us that I don't know when how long ago was that in in Durban, a couple of years yeah. ago when they they travelled over here. So they've done it before in South Africa. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they've done it before in South Africa, and look, mm-hmm. this weekend it's really all to play for for them. You know, we yeah. also obviously have everything to play for, but you know, we've won a rugby championship before. Um, mm-hmm. They've never gone back to back. So beating the box and also win, winning a championship, they've never done that before. So this will be massive exactly. for them. They've beaten, mm. I've seen also the last, in the last uh, 12 months, they've beaten four out of the world's top five teams. So they are yeah. on the up. They definitely have the confidence. Absolutely. They have the players. Yeah. Um, yeah, but then, I mean, taking a look at the Springbok side. So I can pop that yeah. up on the screen. Um, we've obviously made a couple of changes. One of them, I think, yeah. the, the, the biggest talking point right now, Money Lebok starting at 10. What do you make of yes. that one? Um, Gabs, well, Sasha Feinberg and Goman Zulu is injured, right? I think he's going for another knee operation. So it's very young in his career that he's already getting his second. Um, so our other fly-off was playing fullback, actually, um, for the Sharks in the Curry Cup final and slotted a, what, a 59-meter kick um, to win uh, the Curry Cup. Uh, final against the Lions. So the only Ironically. option is, Monty, <laughs> yeah, is uh, a Monty Libok. So Monty Libok starting this weekend. And, you know, honestly, obviously hindsight is the, the best kind of science, but um, you would like Monty Libok rather to start and Andre Pollard to finish the game if it does come down to a clutch kick, then, then you would have Monty Libok coming onto the field and then having to perform that duty for the team. Um, right. So I think that's, there, I think I, I'm a bit more comfortable because let's be honest, Monty Libok's overall game, I think he's, he's yeah. kicking in general and his running game is, is extremely good. He's got Fussy at the back. There's, those are wheels for days with Colby coming back into the side and Kirkley on the other side. So um, I think there's a lot of speed there. Um, and uh, I think Andre Pollard can always come on um, and seal the game if we do end up in that position yeah. again. 100%. I mean, look, Money's territorial play in general, his open game play, everything is, is fairly exceptional. Yeah. It's just the, the kicking element of it, the, the BMT moment. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, other than that, you also see obviously the likes of probably what should be the headline, Eben Etzabet, record breaker, yeah. the guy Absolutely. that's going to be the most cap springboked this weekend in history. He's going to pass yeah. Sir, Victor, Sir Victor Matfield's record. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, quite if bummed for is, him. Gabsy, if there is a, a label that we can give him above legend of Springbok rugby, I think we need to find it because not only does that guy get to 128 caps, but the performances that he has delivered for the Springboks and his current form is is something to be phenomenal because yeah. um, he's done a lot for this uh, for this team and he's got another World Cup in him. I'm pretty sure. Hundred percent. No, two, for sure. I mean, he's 32 of age, so at the age of 35, he can still squeeze in another one. Maybe even an, uh, at the age of 39, yeah, he can even go one another one. That. Why not? Maybe I mean, you know, sure. Look, <laughs> look at his conditioning. I mean, yeah, honestly, <laughs> I mean, also one thing about the players. He's been there with the box through so many different stages. You know, he's been yeah. part of that record loss in New Zealand, 58-57-0. Two-time yeah. two World Cup winner, phenomenal player. We can talk about him for hours. 
Any other players mm. in this lineup worth mentioning for you? I mean, Apolele Fasi getting another go at at 15. Mm. Lucanio arm slotting in on the bench instead of what could have well, been see, also like a valley. That's an interesting one. I think a quick talking point then. Um, so having now a 5-3 bench and bringing in Lucanio arm as your sort of utility extra player that you have on the back line, him probably can cover then 12 and 13 if need be. But ideally, you don't want to make too many changes if Lucanio um, comes on. So is it going to be worth then moving him to 13, taking uh, JC Krill to the wing? And then, you know, then, then we're moving too many positions around already. I think it should be a life-for-life -life replacement. It's for me a very interesting one, to be honest. Uh, I was more expecting Vali to slot in there. I understand uh, the thinking. Yeah. Um, because also, you know, that means Apaleli plays the full 80 or you shift KLA or Chesen to, to Kobe, fullback. Um, yeah, Kobe but, to fullback maybe yeah, even, I mean, yeah. I would also be surprised just seeing the form Jesse Krull is in right now. He's, he's massive on the fence yeah. if they take yeah, him yeah, off. So that would be... Out. Yeah, let's see what happens on that one on the weekend. Um, obviously, also Gerard Stenkamp getting another go ahead there. Um, Vincent yeah. Koch. So, no, a very solid team. team. Very yeah, it's, yeah, it's a very, very strong team. I mean, look, tons of World Cup winners, tons of experience. Jasper Visa kind of claiming the eight jersey as it stands. Yeah. Sia Kulisi back in the mix. Curry, cool. anything yeah, we can... Yeah, I mean, anything we can, before we have to wrap it up, expect from this Argentina side, anything worth mentioning on the, on the end? Well, they, they deserve this position that they're in, right? If they, they beat the box with a bonus point this weekend, I mean, the, the cup is theirs, right? The, the box can win this championship if they get any kind of bonus point, even if it is a losing bonus point out of this game. That will be a massive anti-climax. Uh, it'll be a massive anti-climax, but I think the team will do it for Yebin and get this one done. But nevertheless, uh, Gabsy, I mean, this uh, this team attacks beautifully. I think they are, with so much talk of Tony Ball, I mean, let's not sleep on Argentina, scoring, what, 38 points against New Zealand in New Zealand, scoring, scoring what, 67 points against... Um, against Australia and then, you know, against the Springbok side, when was the last time we saw a team score four tries in such a short period of time? Just in general, scoring tries against yeah. the Springboks is difficult. So um, I think Felipe Contepone, great player he was, and now it looks like he's really getting the troops up, um, the Argentinians, yeah. for, uh, for an epic final game. So let's not I'm sleep it. on them. It's going to be a lot coming from them for this game. And yeah, let's celebrate this Heritage Week um, and yeah. hope the box can uh, 100%. Back. No, for sure. I mean, I would really hope to, to see the boys step it up on defense, but I think, like you said, they'll do it for, for Yebin and yeah, they'll they'll pray for pride. Just the last one mm. then, What what's your prediction on the game, actually, the other game happening, the Bledisloe Snow Cup game, Australia, New Zealand, what, what would you make of that one? Uh, well, the All Blacks, man. Now we're, now we're heading into seven games in a row where they haven't scored a point in the last 20 minutes. I mean, how shocking is that? Um, yeah. There's clearly, I don't know if they're using their bench correctly, but there's something not uh, clicking that well over there. Um, but for the rest, I think the only way the All Blacks, or the only yeah, thing that can beat the All Blacks this weekend is the Wellington curse. Um, and uh, let's, let's hope that that won't be... Um, the, the case, but uh, you know, Australia, they've got uh, they've got the British and Irish lines coming up next year. It's important for them to also put on a performance to, that they're yeah, proud of to keep and their fans are proud of. So. And so, yeah, box and, say, box and Los Pumas, box by, yeah. 12, box by 12, and I'd say, um, all blacks by 10. I'm gonna go definitely Bocker by. 10 plus, confident as always, have faith <laughs> in the boys. And um, I yeah, I would say the All Blacks will probably bounce back and, and thrash the Wallabies mm. this weekend. I just think they, they will not have another close game. Guys, let us know what you think will Enjoy happen this weekend. weekend guys. And uh, yeah. yeah, drop your predictions, comments, tell us how much you love or hate us. And thanks for the continuous support. <laughs> have a lovely weekend. Right. Cheers, Gordy. Cheers, guys.